No, I'm not Margaret Green. I was going to, Margaret was going to be here tonight. Maggie McCallum, I'm not her either. So um, it's number three in the list of uh, people who are going to do this talk. I'm also talking about the fossil grove as well. I'll try and rattle through this fairly quickly. Simon's given us a very good introduction to the Carboniferous and what we've been looking at recently is quite a lot of Carboniferous stuff. I'm going to attempt to change this slide from here. Let's just see if it would. I'll hold it against my leg. There we are. So uh, the group's been quite active even through COVID times. And recently we've been out in the field doing stuff. Uh, but we have been engaged in a bit of work with uh, trying to uh, preserve this lovely cross bedded stuff down at Dumbarton, um, where there was a building uh, proposal in the cliffs above it. And uh, you probably can't hear me, can you? Because I haven't got that on. Have I got this on? Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me? One, two, one, two. Oh, microphones are just so. That's better. Okay. Um, and Rook and Glenn. So there's a whole series of flyers that this SGG have been putting out over the last few years. And we're going to uh, have a look at trying to produce this. We've also, since COVID, we've been looking at a whole range of sites, mainly on the north side of Glasgow, to try and see what more public sort of outreach information we can, we can produce uh, in these, some of these areas in the Carboniferous on the north side of Glasgow. Um, my, Simon's already talked beyond the south side first. Simon's already mentioned uh, Lynn Park and the trackway. So a leaflet there, maybe not quite. This is the problem, uh, identifying places in leaflets. And then people go there and it wrecks it. So you, you've got this always dilemma with outreach. So you make it too popular, then people can uh, find it. So we'll have to be careful with this one. Um, so we've been up at Camp Sea Glen as a group. And uh, we're going to uh, re re repairing some of the boards and we're looking at uh, enhancing the current leaflet, making a may maybe making a wee, a wee booklet. Um, this is part of the um, one of the information boards up at the, at the car park at the, on, the, on, the, on the top of the, uh, those of you who know the Crow Road car park there, there's a couple of information boards up there. And we're looking at trying to get a new leaflet and some information boards down at the bottom so that we can actually uh, create a sort of geological trail, maybe sell the booklet at the, at the, at the little cafe there. It's a nice little place uh, to do some good geology, except the access into the very depth of the glen is a bit difficult because of the sort of high rainfall has brought a few trees down. So it's made it a bit tricky. I think Margaret's got some nice pictures here of the lichen beds, cement stones in the, in the burn, uh, waterfalls. Um, so it's a lovely place. It's a very popular, obviously, place, but it was popular for the... It's got some really good geology, and it's worth sort of uh, using it as, a, as, a, as an example of outreach geology. Um, this is, again, one of the uh, Crow Road signs that, uh, that is up there that, we've, that Margaret has dutifully been cleaning, getting the graffiti off it and trying to stop it leaking. And you can see it's got a, a QR code that links you to the Jolsoc Us our website. So all, you know, high-tech stuff, you know? And then on the uh, upper section above the main road, there's this Markle basalt quarry, which has got these lovely uh, large phenocrysts of plagioclase in it. So a nice little location with the waterfalls, the car park, the views, and uh, we'll, we'll be looking at getting a, a leaflet and a booklet and a, and a geo trail up there. That's one of the things we've been doing. Oh, that's just the upper waterfall that Margaret went and had another visit to. So we've got a bit more a bit more reconnaissance work to do that. And any, any of you who are interested in helping out with this and joining the group, we've had some lovely little trips. We usually try and find a place that's got good geology and a coffee shop. That seems to be the important thing, either to start and finish or both at the coffee shop, uh, get a lunch somewhere. We just do our own. We don't have minibuses. We, don't, we just get our own way there, meet at a time, and we just potter around and look at geology. And it's very sociable and very interesting. And we're... And then we decide on what we think we can do with that site, what needs to be done. Um, we've done two visits to Dawes Home and Kelvin River, which has been quite interesting um, because there's been some interest in produce. There's no literature at all in the public domain about the, 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 the outcrops from Kelvin Bridge up to Dawes Home. And uh, we've been sort of thinking about what we could do with this, this whole area. Um, there's a lot of the information, the base information for these sites comes from the British Geological Survey's audit of city council area. They did one for Glasgow area and one for Eastern Bartonshire area. 
and um, they're very, very thorough reports written by the BGS for the City Council and the and Eastern Barnshire Council on the geology of their of the sites. And each of them has about a five or six page uh, description of the site and where maybe the conservation area and the, and the geological sites of interest might be. And so we've been using this as a basis for um, trying to produce some sort of new maps and new guidance on this, this particular site, for example. We sort of get the geological map and we go and look at the stuff that's been already discovered or thought about. We go there and we go in ourselves and I've been trying to produce a map. This is a map that I've just made of the Dawes home area with suggested sort of site numbers and possible the sort of red trail would be where you could walk, which might be the basis of a map that would be in a booklet or a leaflet. So these are the sorts of things we've been looking at. Um, I'll just show a few pictures of some of the key outcrops in Dawes home. There's a, a dog. Um, with some cross bedding, um, nice big quarry, a sand quarry on the edge of the river. There's a close up of the, uh, some of the cross bedding in the bridge by the bridge. No dog in that one. Big channel across the other side of the river, which you can see when, from the river. Um, and there's a coal seam as well, which was, you can see it cutting in underneath there where people have obviously been scrabbling around trying to pull a bit of coal out in the years gone by. So there's some good geology there, and there's also a huge fault. Uh, well, not a huge fault, but a large fault. And there's Ian, not at fault, in the foot wall. Of, he's, there's the foot wall of fault. The fault's down, throwing to the right-hand side here. Um, and it's the fault on the map that I showed that had one of the faults on that. So you can actually see a fault on the map and actually go and see it and touch it and look. And we found some sort of uh, plant fossils in the, uh, in the, in the fault zone. Oops, let's go back one. And the, the southern section of the river uh, down to Kelvin Bridge has got some good uh, geology in the, in the buildings, uh, the river, the bridges, some outcrops, and then the flint mill as well at, uh, at near Kelvin Bridge. So there's a sort of ge you know, ge building stone and an archaeological sort of geological story to be told. So we look at integrating all that maybe into a whole leaflet stroke booklet, working with friends of the River Kelvin uh, and, and the city council. And we'll see what we can do. It's a bit of a futuristic project, but um, we've got the bare bones of the information there. We make a nice little, it's a very popular walkway. So to have a, a trail booklet for it that integrates the geology with the archaeology and the railway line. There's lovely railway bridges, lovely story of the railway lines and the industrial archaeology of the Kelvin. So that's uh, all in the, in the pipeline. We went to, the last trip we made was to Overton. Um, it's really nice. Uh, again, not much information as been published on that. We have uh, lovely sandstones in the, in the, of the Clyde sandstone exposed there, a big exposure of the Valligan beds, uh, and the overlying uh, Kinniswood Devonian, the underlying Kinniswood Devonian stuff with a big normal fault between it, which confused us to start with because it's the way you look at the fault, you're looking at the fault plane in front of you, and these on the, the beds in front of you are on the downthrown side of the fault with these young, uh, older rocks, the Devonian on the other side of them. And this is the uh, this is the uh, the exposure of the beds with the cement stone beds lines beds in them, some lovely uh, calcrete nodules in the in the in the in the stream bed, and this is the Devonian, the redder Devonian stuff at the top of the cliff. Again, we can produce a map of this, and we can produce a nice trail. It's a nice walk and a nice cafe on a Friday or Saturday, which we didn't get in. Did some of you got into it because it was very busy, wasn't it? Yeah, but there is a. We'll go there another time. Yeah. We've got more reconnaissance to do there. So. And then and there's some a lovely landslip. So people that listen to Colin Ballantyne's speak, talk last month will know all about these land. This, this surface here looks like it's come up there. It's come right down here. So landslip. Uh, so we can talk about that as well in, the, in any guides. So that was what I was going to just give you an update. I hope that's not doing too 